Just a few weeks ago, we had the 2023 World Ninja League Championships where athletes flew in from all over the world, spanning different age divisions, different everything, different backgrounds, different experience levels. And we had quite the event with a record-breaking amount of competitors, a record-breaking amount of events and activities to entertain everybody throughout the entire weekend. In the elite division, we had two come out on top in the male and female divisions. Please join me in welcoming your world champions for the 2023 season, season eight, Addie Herman and Tyler Smith. Guys, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. It's it's absolutely crazy. I've said this a couple of times to some people, but that was my first world's um, set the bar very high. You guys, uh, you guys were awesome. You, you, uh, were absolute highlights of the, of the show. And that's, uh, that's what I want to talk about. So, uh, we'll start off with the, uh, very beginning. We'll go with, we'll go with stage one first. Uh, Addy, why don't you give me your insight on how you were trying to approach that given that in the past, uh, a lot, every, actually every elite female division ended on stage one. Yeah, so going into stage one, especially with my past performances, the past few years, actually, I ended up making a mistake that I felt like I shouldn't have. I underperformed. It wasn't as well as I could have done or what I trained to do. So going into stage one, I wanted to have a plan and just be so confident in that plan to stick to it and just get the clear, honestly. In past years, I've tried to clear going super fast or throwing riskier moves, but this time I didn't want to be slow. I wanted to be efficient, but focus on hitting the buzzer. And it worked because we we had, you know, we had Abby and Isabella also hit the buzzer. Um, and it's one of those things where if you were rushing, could have haunted you, you know, you never know with these, with these types of courses, but at the same time, it's definitely a very uh, mature and methodical way to approach it. And definitely. How about you? Uh, how about you, Tyler? Uh, my whole goal was pretty much just to clear. And uh, so it worked out pretty well. And uh, yeah, I just didn't want to do anything too risky, go too fast and make any mistakes. Uh, and I didn't do anything too special on my run, but it turned out pretty well. And I was quite happy with it. Good enough for the buzzer. Uh, how did you feel about the obstacles specifically? Um, They were a little bit, they were... They were pretty technical for stage one, especially the last one. Uh, the throwback was quite scary going up to it. Um, I'm trying to think of all the obstacles that were in it. They all kind of combined between stage one and two. Yeah. We, uh, had our, uh, we had like our little twisters at the beginning with the uh, oh, sideways, yes. sideways grab. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the sideways grabs, they, they always scare me a little bit because it's a lot of hand placement and very technical. So I really just didn't want to mess those up and uh, – but they they were definitely fun. And Addy, talk me through uh, the balance obstacle, our, our fourth obstacle there. We we saw a lot of fails on there. It was one of our big crux points in the competition. So how did you approach that one? Um, well, for me personally, that was like by far the most uh, scary obstacle for me on the course. Even beforehand, I was probably most nervous about the log just because it's agility. Anything can happen. Good ninjas can go out on it. So when I got there, I wanted to be super confident, but also get off of it as fast as possible. So I did not take the slow approach. I did, I think, three steps, then two steps to just get off as fast as I could, keep moving forwards, and it ended up working. It was it was very interesting to see all of the different approaches in different divisions. Um, obviously, on the kids' side, it didn't spin, so they could kind of just walk across. In the adult division, um, we had... I think it locked if you turned it a couple of times. And so we actually had some people try and lock it in place and then shimmy across knowing that they weren't going to fall, but you guys didn't have that. It was just free spinning constantly. So you were, it, it was very interesting seeing all of those different approaches. It's real nice to kind of pick at your brains a little bit. Um, Tyler, a lot of people cleared. Uh, we had 34 clears on, on stage one, which meant um, while Addy did, guarantee her spot on the podium after stage one you know you still had a ways to go how did that make you feel oh it was fun I mean it's elite division I mean it's kind of what you expect in going into such a high quality of ninjas so I knew it wasn't going to come down to stage one or probably even stage two um so my whole goal was just to clear so that I could make it to stage two and hopefully have a good run order going into stage two, which I think I got 10th on stage one. So I went 10th from last on stage two, which 
was a pretty decent spot around where I wanted to be. So, uh, yeah, it was just, it, it was a lot of competition and it was quite scary. Yeah, I totally get that. It's one of those, yeah, it's a long weekend. You know, you got to play the long game for sure. Really, really uh, admirable approach there. And uh, Addy, knowing that you had locked yourself in on the podium there and got your first stage one buzzer, how did that feel? I mean, that felt amazing. Not only clearing, but locking in podium, like you said. And it was also just super exciting that it would come down to stage two, since that's the first time that's happened. So me, Abby, and Isabella all knew we'd have to do our absolute best on stage two to fight for that champion spot. That was it was so cool. I don't know if you've ever watched back or anything, but I was doing commentary for you guys and everything. And it was it was hard not to get too loud when you guys were clearing. It was um yeah, I I just speechless, speechless. I it's it's tough sometimes to differentiate, you know, the WNL employee in me and then the fan in me. It's it's tough, but it's exciting, you know. It was a, it was an amazing weekend all around. Um at least for me. I, I hope you guys enjoyed your time there. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Yeah, it was great. Uh, we're going to take a little trip into stage two now. Um, this was where the uh, women's elite division was decided, and then also where the men's podium was decided as well. So we'll walk through that. We'll start off with Tyler this time. Uh, how did that course feel for you? Because we saw a lot of fails in a lot of different spots. Yeah, it was quite nerve wracking going into it, knowing that only Jay had cleared. And like I was a, I mean, it was it was scary because I knew it all came down to that blind grab because I made it efficiently through the first couple of obstacles. They were all fun. But coming down to the uh, the falling X's, all the, the scary moves, scary and technical moves on it. Uh, I just had to make sure that I was efficient on it and got hand placement right. And it it was it was scary. Yeah. When I, when I saw them setting up the course and I saw the second set of X's where you had to go for the further ledges, I was looking at it and I was like, oh, you know, it'd be really cool if they had to like go past the original ones. So it's, it's a little tougher for them. And then, um, one of the, I, I think it was Thomas Stillings. He was like, yeah, that's what they have to do. I was like, oh, perfect. It was so fun. But yeah, a lot of big moves on that one. Uh, was there anything before that, that really threw you off at all? Uh, not too much. I mean, the boards going up them to special deliveries. I mean, uh, last year I fell on a special delivery on stage two. I think it was like the third obstacle. They were boxes yep. and, uh, I failed going into the special delivery. So I was super cautious going into that, uh, making sure I didn't want to fail them. And, uh, thankfully I didn't, but getting to that X where you had to go past and then grab, I honestly had no clue that we had to do that until it was, uh, time for rules so as soon as i saw that it it was scary <laughs> totally fair and then addy this was where you secured your world championship but you did have to go about halfway through the run order did that kind of mess with your strategy at all a little bit um i'm not sure i guess for my my entire strategy for stage two was to get as far as i could my goal was to get past the special deliveries which didn't happen because i failed the special delivery um but same thing with stage one, I wanted to be really efficient. So be confident in all my moves, not risky, but keep moving the whole time because I knew that it could come down to who got to the special delivery fastest. So that was my goal. I tried to just be as fast as I could, like I said, without being risky. And I think honestly, the biggest thing from stage two is that I definitely underestimated how pumped I would get. I think it was the hammers because I was over gripping them so much. Mm. But by the time I got to the special delivery, I was definitely feeling it more than I thought I would. I love how neither of you were like, yeah, the giant sky hook lane. That was, <laughs> oh, you guys were fine through that. <laughs> like not much of a concern for you guys. Um, sky hooks are like my favorite obstacle. So when I saw that I was in the course, I was super excited. That's fair. I, I've seen, you know, I've seen you guys reels a couple of times on Instagram and everything. So when I saw some of these obstacles, I was like, yeah, they should be fine. It's right up their alley. And then again, this is Addy where you locked in that uh, world championship officially and strongest ninja, which is something that I want to point out as well. Addy had a near sweep at the world championships this year, got first in every single event except for one of the skills, if I'm not mistaken. So like at that point, she had locked in both titles. Did that settle did that set in with you did anyone clue you in on that at all 
Um, I wasn't super focused on World's Strongest Ninja, more just the championship title. But once I found that out, it was definitely super exciting as well. Awesome. It was a very, very dominant performance. Um, and you did qualify for stage three for Strongest Ninja points. And it, you know, it was, in my words, I, I think I called it your victory lap because it didn't, no one was going to touch you mathematically, but how did you, did you treat it like a victory lap or did you treat it as like, let's give it my best shot? Um, definitely as giving it my best shot. I always want to go into every course I do training or competition. Um, just doing my best, my absolute best, especially in training. Cause I really think how you train is how you compete. So for stage three, I made a plan just like the other stages. Um, and then I failed earlier than I wanted to, but I honestly, I was happy with my run, happy with how I got through the first part of the course, at least. So I had fun on stage three for sure. Awesome. And then that brings us to stage three with Mr. Tyler Smith, our history making run. I do want to shout out Noam Munir first off though, um, who did run right before Tyler and got the buzzer on stage three. And I think it's really nice that like you both, clinched your titles with that run you know Noah got strongest ninja Tyler you got world champion uh did seeing Noah's run kind of make things a little clearer in your head Tyler um I'd like to say yes but it was probably the most nervous I've been going into a run after seeing him clear because uh I mean I knew I was guaranteed top three from me Jackson and Jay but being so close to first I knew that if I had a great run on stage three that that would just make me really happy and so after seeing Noah do it and knowing that it was clearable, I was just really hoping that uh, it was clearable for me. Were there were there any spots that really concerned you on the course? Um, pretty much every point. I mean, I kind of flash pumped a little bit on the on the clocks, and so everything from them them on was a little bit scary. I mean, my forearms were tired. My grip felt surprisingly great though. Uh, another scary part was on the inverter part, whenever you reach the sloper mm -hmm. and I slid off of it and then I re-grabbed, went for the reach again and got it. I had no clue if I was going to be able to hold on with both hands long enough to make it to the next bar on the other one. Yeah, that one, when you first missed the first touch, I was like, oh man, because most of the time when we saw that, the athlete fell. And so I was, I was very concerned after that, but it was a great recovery. Um, and then we got to see you, I would say in your wheelhouse a little bit on the last obstacle ax factor, you know, we know you train a lot of these more technical obstacles as well. Um, so why don't you kind of break down how you felt when you were facing down that obstacle? Definitely. Uh, whenever I got to it and I picked up the ax, I knew I only had 15 seconds left. So I knew I had to get moving quick chalk up, uh, try and rest as much as I could shake out. I grabbed the ax and it was twice as grippy as I thought it would be which I was so thankful for. And uh, as soon as I hopped up on it, my whole thinking process was uh, lift it off big back and then just swing it forward and pray that I get it on the next bar. And uh, once I did get it on, I hung on, got to the last one, got it on. I felt like I was sliding a little bit, but barely hung on and then went for the dismount. And uh, yeah, it was great. <laughs> it was great. It was a great moment. How did it feel to hit that buzzer? Uh, pretty phenomenal. I mean, it, it, it made me speechless. Like I had no idea how I felt after it. And it probably didn't, I probably, it probably didn't sink in until after Jay's run. Right. Who He had a, he had a great run. And then, uh, and then award ceremony was definitely the tip of the iceberg. It can be a lot to take in and then to still have, you know, two runners after you, especially when, you know, Jackson and Jay are two ninjas fully capable of clearing that course on any other day. Um, it just wasn't their day that time. And uh, it was absolutely yours. Very well-deserved wins from both of you. Uh, I did want to ask a general, like, just survey question almost. Did you guys feel the course was a little more balanced this time around? Uh, for me, definitely. I mean, stage two felt great. I mean, I would have liked to see, like, probably two or three more clears at least. Uh, I think there were a bunch of people who were very capable of clearing it. It was just, uh, it was a little heartbreaking, uh, for my friend, Sam and Noah, of course, what happened to them, but, um, yeah. And then stage three in the past years, whenever we go through it, 
and look at it, it almost looks impossible. But we know that if someone has a great day, that it's very doable. But this year, uh, it was almost perfectly balanced with uh, with two clears. It was it felt great. Awesome. And and Addy, how about how about on the women's side here? Because we've seen and heard a lot of uh, a lot of feedback and criticism over the years, saying like we want more on the women's side of the course. Um. Yeah, I would agree with Tyler. I thought that the courses were much better than any of the previous years. I actually really enjoyed all the courses. Stage one, especially for the women, I thought was perfect as it gave us three clears, which made it exciting for stage two and everything. I thought stage two was great. And stage three was not only fun to do, but really fun to watch, which I also think was really good for spectators as well. Yeah, again, spectator slash employee watching was, I could have, they could have said you're getting paid nothing. And you just have to sit there for 12 hours and watch course runs. I would have been totally fine doing so with that course. Like it was, it was a very entertaining time for me at least. And I'm glad you feel the same way. You know, of course, um, some people might be like, oh, they won. Of course, they're going to say good things about it. No, like we just, we want to make sure that you guys have a good time. We want you guys to come back. So it's very, very exciting that, um, that you guys enjoyed yourselves this weekend. Um, with that said, we're going to narrow it down between the two of you here. I have 10 questions about the World Ninja League. Multiple choice. Some of them. And uh, we're going to see who knows more about our beloved league here for the title of real world champion. Yeah. So, oh, gosh. Yeah. This, is, this determines, you know, who the trophies with. Actually, who has the trophy right now? I think they keep it. They just put our names on. They just on keep it. it? Oh. Yeah. It's a bummer. <laughs> yeah. I, they always say, like, they can bring it home to their. I'm like, how are they sharing it? Like, <laughs> always, always, yeah, we pull back the curtain a little bit there. Give them trophies, dude. Like, give them more trophies. Give them the cup. You guys, so what? You guys only got it on like the podium and that's it? Yeah, that's all I held it. <laughs> yeah, same Dang. here. Dang. All right, with that said, we're going to get right into our first question for trivia. All right. Question one. Who were the first two champions, male and female, of the World Ninja League, formerly National Ninja League? Oh, wait. Is it multiple choice or not this one? <laughs> Probably not this one. Oh. Oh, God. <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. So for male and female? Yeah. If you get well, if you get one, I'll I'll just I'll give you the point because why not? Uh if you're stumped, for, we'll cut it from the episode. For some reason I feel like I don't know if it was like Jeff Britton. No. Was it Jeff Britton? No. Jeff Britton was the male champion. Yeah. He was? Yep. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. It was a great, it was a great, I think it's cause I think Alex said it during your run. Oh, oh, he oh might have, yeah. Okay. I have said it. So maybe it just like, a okay. That, uh, that's why. Yeah. It was just lingering in my head. Yeah, I, yeah. I had no idea why. Our first female champion was Jesse LeBrec. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. So we've got, um, this one's going to be a multiple choice. Which state had the most athlete registrations at this year's world championships it's either a maine b maryland c massachusetts three d michigan apparently i can't spell or count yeah so maine maryland massachusetts michigan i think massachusetts that is correct we are looking at massachusetts it's one one between both of our world champions here there you go. Tyler's cracking his neck over there. He's trying to, you know, oh, get ready. Bring it. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Um, this season, we had three women hit the buzzer on the elite female stage one side. Before that, how many women had hit the buzzer? Bonus point if you can name them. In, in elite female or any female division? We're going to, like, elite slash, like, adult when elite didn't exist. Oh, okay. Um, how many and bonus points if you name them? Um, 
Well, the only one I know of is Isabella last year. Same. All right. We're going to go a little more old school on you guys. The first woman was in 2018. It was Olivia Vivian. Uh, oh. Yeah. Cool. So her and Isabella. All right. Oh, you guys both. I mean, you, you got Isabella. So I'm going to give you guys both a point for that one, which means we're still tied up. We're still mm -hmm. at 2 2. Who is the only athlete to compete in the top division across all eight seasons? Think a little more, OG. Uh, is it Joe Joe Morovsky? It is Joe Morovsky. Tyler gets the point Ooh. there. <laughs> Let's go. He's looking out to the side like he's got like he's got someone telling him the answers, uh, you know. <laughs> No, I'm just I'm just looking around my room trying to think. <laughs> no, nah, this is his it's his thinking face, you know. I got you, I got you. All right, here's here's one that you guys might know. Uh you each won five thousand dollars for winning the world championship. What's the prize for second place? Is it three thousand? A little lower. Two thousand? Oh. Or two thousand five hundred. We're not cheap, I promise, guys. Fifteen hundred. Is it just a thousand? Okay. It's a thousand. There we go. We're all tight. Uh. <laughs> okay, we're gonna we're gonna kind of flex our uh, flex our our widespread reach. You know, our impact in the ninja world. Uh, the World Ninja League has partners and facilities in how many continents? I'm gonna go on a limb and say three. All right. Addy? Um, just to be, wait. Hmm. Uh, wait, can I say the same thing? You can, you can. I'm going to say three, two. And you're both incorrect. It's four. There we go. We got North America, Europe, Nuts. Asia, and Oceania. Uh, um, but yeah. What is that? Oceania. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I Should I say just, should I just say Australia? It's just Australia anyways, but you know, um, okay. Here's an interesting one. How many athletes have won three world championships in any division? Um, two. No. <laughs> three. You're getting colder. One. One is one. I kind of gave you that one, but it was uh, it was Oliver Lutman who had a hot streak of uh, from 2020 to 2022, absolutely hmm. dominant as well. Here's another one you're going to want to think of a younger athlete as well. What athlete has won the most individual events at the world championships? This includes like stages or skills. I think I want to say Charlie Ball. Charlie Ball is correct, he's won 12 different events in his WNL career, which means Tyler is up by one point. Uh, what was the name of the gym that hosted the adult championships in season three, which was 2018? Was it the ed edge? It was no. not. No. Uh -oh. I'll give um, you guys... Wait, what? I don't think I know this one at all. I'll give you guys a hint. The gym is currently closed down. It, ooh, quest ninja quest let's go all right which I, means I sadly didn't make it there before they closed i um, really wanted to that was actually the worlds that uh that got me hooked on like the actual yeah. league side of everything because before that i was so into the shows yeah. um but once i realized like oh i know some of these people or i like i'm interested in more ninja stuff it was you know it was over from there five years later here we are <laughs> Um, all right. What was the name of the first obstacle on stage one this year? Mm -hmm. It was also on gauntlet. I don't know. I just called them the spinning logs. So I don't nice. know. <laughs> that's the thing. That's the, that's the other thing I learned. Like no one really goes by the obstacle names except for like us. Like you guys just kind of call it whatever it literally is. Yeah, I called it the obstacle I really didn't want to fall on. Did those <laughs> did those spin for you guys? Not much at all, I don't think. Okay, I was going to say, I think for every division, it didn't spin. I don't think it did. Because yeah, I was 
We yeah, didn't. I was just hoping it didn't. Yeah. yeah. We didn't want another swivel steps incident. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't think anyone failed it across all divisions. It's pretty nice. It was road flares. So road flares. All right. This last one's going to be worth three points. So if Addie gets it, she can win. <laughs> it's it's whoever gets the closest to this number is going to get it. All right. How many total athletes competed at Worlds this year? Like. I want to say like 6,000. No, okay. no. Uh, uh, you, you don't have to lock that in. Think about it. Think about it for a little bit. Mm, I think 5,000. All right. I want to say like 3,000 around there. I, I keep thinking of so many spectators. There's so many spectators. So cool. There were a lot of spectators. It's It's kind of like when you have like a – youth competitor you just automatically have to group in their parents or something exactly so it's like, grandparents yeah yeah i yeah. want to say like three thousand. i love 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 how optimistic you guys are about this <laughs> someday <laughs> someday we will hit those numbers and i will i will welcome that number with open arms but the number we're looking for is 1991 so just a little under 2000 which means um Tyler gets the three points. Oh, yay. Tyler is our real world champion. Addy, you got to give him all of your stuff. Give him your winnings. Give him your medal. Yeah, you just got to give everything away. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, yeah, so that's that was uh, that was our trivia round. Good job. We'll, we'll see if anyone, if our uh, future world champions, whether it's you guys again, which I wouldn't be surprised with, or if future world champions, um, you know, do better or worse we'll see but um do you guys have any uh i, I assume we're going to get this out to a lot of different uh younger viewers as well do you, you guys have any advice for up-and-coming ninjas out there yeah i guess my main piece of advice would be to stay consistent for me i think persistence over perfection has always been a big thing um sometimes it doesn't go well or you get stuck on a plateau you feel like you're not improving and if you just keep sticking with it keep training keep putting in the work it will come together and the outcome will be good good job uh my thing is is kind of the same thing but like don't give up especially uh if you especially for this league like first year I was in it I got 10th then I got fifth then I got third then last year was not my best year fell on stage two then this year great things happen so if you just stay consistent in it and uh if you don't stop training you you'll most likely do the best that you're able to absolutely it's such an unforgiving sport and it's it's tough to see you know you walk around sometimes and you see uh some of our younger athletes you know in tears over their result and it's it's tough to tell them that it's going to get better um but at the same time you know you guys are fully proof of that you know everyone starts somewhere and uh it, it's truly inspiring to see how far you guys have come um and and i look forward to seeing you know what's next for you guys so what is next for you guys um for me i have a bunch of other league finals in a few weeks so i have that up next i'd say all right tyler same i pretty much have the same thing uh other finals other leagues a yeah. bunch of a bunch of competitions more training i take it we'll see you guys as well in nsc season three. Oh, oh definitely definitely absolutely looking Very forward to that. that yeah and then adding on to that we do have our premiere series coming up which is going to take the top 25 percent of every region which you guys obviously fall under that category uh for a shot at the uh title of the best of the absolute best on courses that are going to be a little tougher than your traditional qualifiers to say the absolute least. We've got some great minds working on it. Um, you know, the one I'm going to is going to be at uh, at motive. We all know Brett Sims makes some amazing courses out there. So how are you guys feeling about that? The potential of more challenging qualifiers, essentially. Yeah, I'm really excited for it. I'm already signed up for the Austin one. So super excited for that one. Yeah, Austin. it sounds super fun. I mean, I love the idea and the concept. It sounds great. Cool. Yeah, Austin Ninjas is 
really cool, just a really cool place in general. I got to go there for the tier two championships and it was kind of crazy to like, I don't know, we did a past episode with uh, Nick Fordney who, you know, does a whole bunch of all, all the courses out there. And he was just talking about how um, that place is really good for making it easy for like beginners, but then also if they need an elite level course, he'll give you an elite level course. And that's really exciting. So I'm, I'm very excited to watch potentially commentate. Um, I wish you guys nothing but the best of luck as we uh, continue on, uh, as you continue on your ninja journeys and as we continue to grow as a league. Uh, thank you again so much for coming out to Worlds. Uh, congratulations. It was more than deserved. You guys were absolutely awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you guys want your like Instagrams on screen at some point as well? Just kind of in case. I don't know. I'm fine with that. I don't care. Okay. <laughs> Figure I ask that just in case. All right. Um, with that said, you guys can catch Addy, Tyler, and all of the top ninjas at the World Ninja League Premier Series kicking off at Ferrex Academy at the end of July. We hope to see you guys there and at all of our other locations. And stay tuned because we are going to have some information about Season 9 coming around after Premier Series. So we'll get you guys going. Take care. We hope to see you at Worlds next year. Could you guys take their titles or are they going to hold on to it? We'll see, you know, in a year or so. Well, I hope they let you hold it again with like your names on it. I think that would I know. Really I, I just want to see it. Yeah. Like you got to have it with your names on it at some point. Mm -hmm. So maybe next year.